So yeah, we're live, so we'll give people time to join us. <laughs> but and that's my—if you can hear that—that's my cousin's phone ringing in the background. <laughs> yeah. Your cousin wants to uh, know that we're on, that, that we're streaming, and he doesn't want to miss it, so he's got an alarm. Yeah, exactly. that's it. <laughs> I just kicked him out of the living room because he was watching TV. <laughs> Take that noise somewhere else. <laughs> That's right. Only for at least for an hour. No big deal. Exactly. <laughs> no big deal. It's like I I know I, I did my homework. How about you, Thax? <laughs> um, well, I came across some weird thing in Salt Lake City I can talk about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not Texas, but while I was there, I talked about here. Now that I'm here, I'll talk about there. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Thanks. And don't I mean we don't don't really expect anything homework from you, Crit. Kitty, but if you have something, great. <laughs> I have something. Awesome. <laughs> that's that's awesome. That sounded foreboding. Yeah. I so. <laughs> well, I just found out about it today, so. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and now you can talk about it. Yes. And we have two people watching us already. Hello, hello, who you are? Hello, Mick Ryder. How you doing? We'll be going. We'll, we'll get started here in a few minutes. We're just waiting for other people to join us. Hey, Mick. Mick's from out of state, yeah. right? I think so. Right? Where are you from, Mick? Remind us, New Mexico, right? Or Nevada, New Mexico. Uh, I'm thinking New Mexico. <laughs> Vi is from New Mexico, I think. Oh, right. Maryland. He's from Maryland. Wow. Wow, that's okay. okay. All right. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> hmm. I've never been to Maryland. Neither have I, oddly enough. I've been all over for my job, but never Maryland. Yeah, I've never been up there. I was, I was, <laughs> my boss tried to get me or the other guy here in Austin to go to New York City to to work for a week. And we were both like, nope, not going. <laughs> Can't go. Nope. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I wouldn't know how to get around New York City with all my tools and everything. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten to be in New York City once and it yeah. was a madhouse. Yeah. I've been there, but I didn't have to work. I was there for vacation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But running around with a bag of tools and, you know, not knowing exactly what I'm going to need at every call, I don't, I wouldn't know how to get the job done inside New York City. I mean, it'd be about the same as me trying to go and buy fabric in the fabric district of New York City and having no idea what to do with it. <laughs> right now I have it. Now what, right? <laughs> Giant bolts. Where do I go? Where's a UPS store? <laughs> exactly. Yes. Compared to dragging your, your tools around, I think going to the fabric dis district would be awesome. <laughs> that would be so much fun. <laughs> Until they, you know, they lose power and their air conditioner goes out of fly five floors, five floors, oh, fabrics. Yeah, yeah. yeah we. Oh, I stayed in. Um, I stayed in one of those uh, home aways kind of thing. It was, or, you know, those rent, you rent a house or a, a, an apartment or something instead of a, a hotel. Yeah. And it was like five stories up. It's a walk up. There was no elevator, and the stairs got steeper as you went up. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, there were small like, stairs, and they were, they got steeper as you went up the stores, the floors. Was that like an old Victorian house? No, it was just an old house. I don't know how old it was. It could have been Victorian. I don't know. It was nice. Narrow stairs and, and really tall. That yeah. that suggests to me that that's like a hundred year old house. It could have been. It could have been nothing else. Myself. Hello, Rita. Hey, Rita. Baltic Con. We'll we'll ask more about that in a little while. Oh, okay. Well, it is. It's close enough. Eight o'clock. I'll do the. I'll do the intros here. Hello. Thank you. you have once again found Texas Team Punk Connection. Uh, we are coming at you from our various airships and bunkers. With me, as always, is Thax, the gentleman adventurer. <laughs> um, Jack could not join us today, but we have Kitty from Fair Treasures. Yay! What's up, yo? Hop in and say hello. Yes. So once again, we are here to talk. Oh, probably about steampunk, most likely. That's what this is about. Um, that's that was the concept of this of this podcast when I started. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk steampunk. <laughs> and believe it or not, sometimes it gets a little difficult to find something to talk about <laughs> that's steampunk related. I feel but, like we're in that, that sort of season where things are slowed down. It's the middle of summer. It's hot. <laughs> we're in the middle. Of a, we're, in, we're in the middle of a plague. The fact that, that we're in the middle of a plague does not help. Yeah. The Delta yep. variant puts us about where we were last year at exactly the same time. Yeah. Hooray. So, 
except you know great old texas is not shutting down because no. you know, we, 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 we yeah we don't we don't we don't we don't cotton to that well whatever <laughs> But, um, so let's go ahead and start off with us. The, the, what I like to do is the pink, the, the steam. Ah, I'm stuttering today. Let me slow down. The podcast within a podcast that I like to call. What are you drinking? <laughs> I'll start off. I couldn't find any stouts or porters that I wanted to drink today. Plus, it's oh. really hot out there. <laughs> so I found what I like. We've been there. We've been to this place often. The Infax together, and uh, we are the Mer Meridian Hyde oh. Lemon. Um, cider. Is it no. cider or mead? It's cider. No, it's, no. no? It's, it's a mead. It's a mead. Yeah, mead. Even better. Yeah, it's a mead. It, Meridian Mer Hive. Meridian That's Hive mead. mead. Yeah. Yeah. Mead. The, le the lemon flavor. And we've been there before. We've tasted many many other flavors, and lemon has been one of my favorites there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice and refreshing. <laughs> mm. Where Especially are they for a hot day. Back? They're located close to Fax. Um, yeah, uh, just across, uh, what is that, 290? Uh, it's east of I-35. Yeah. And just north, north of 290. 290. Yeah, just they barely north of 290. Apple call center right up in there. Uh, they're, they're also right behind that uh, that haunted house, that big that big haunted house that was there sometimes. Um, we, we did an escape room there one time with that zombie. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It, it's it's sort of up in the middle of like a little office complex area that no one would have any business going to, yep. except there's there's alcohol there now. So it's a tiny so little funny. place, and it's hard to find if you don't know where it is. Because <laughs> wait, my navigator never takes me directly to it. It takes me like behind it somewhere. You know, actually, oh. in fact, it takes me, it takes me to the haunted house when I put in the the, the navigation. Nice. <laughs> so haunted it's, navigator, it's like around around the block. So that's what I'm drinking. It's really nice. Really, it's not too sweet, not too sour. It's smooth. I like it. Mm. That's one of the things I liked about Meridian Hive. Um, meads have a tendency, uh, and, so, and pe some people prefer it to be re like really sweet and kind of syrupy. Uh, I don't think Meridian Hive really goes that direction. Yeah, they, not they, really. They no. have a really good balance uh, of of semi-sweet uh to to dry sometimes mm -hmm. and they've got a number of of flavors uh and I these are, this one's carbonated i don't know if there's a, if that makes a difference they're carbonated as well some of them yeah that does you, make a difference yeah you think that's the natural carbonation or they actually inject carbonation into it i don't know i never asked like, it's not like <laughs> a soda right a little bit like a soda it's carbonated for sure hmm. huh they've always been you've had them <laughs> They have different kinds. Um, yeah, some, some they have none. They have some non-carbonated ones too. Yeah, but anyway, good. yeah, highly yeah. recommend. So that's mine. What are you drinking, Fax? <laughs> okay, well, um, last weekend I just I just got back from from Salt Lake City, which I mentioned uh, two yes. weeks ago. I was imprisoned in a hotel room, <laughs> and you had a bad um, beer, a really bad beer. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, so when I came back. Uh, I've been drinking a lot <laughs> for, the last you got back? <laughs> um, for the last two weeks. So I wasn't looking for a lot of alcohol, but we made some, some white sangria oh. Ooh. Some kiwis and some three buck Chuck, <laughs> which is to say for those not familiar, a $3 bottle of wine, uh, uh, yeah. not, not a good wine, but I, I picked one that was like a, a, a Riesling or something really, on the sweet side and then a Chardonnay that's a little more tart. So they balanced out and then the, the fruits, the natural juices, uh, sitting in it for what's it been like four, three, four days now. Uh, <laughs> nice. It's quite nice. nice. It's very good. Especially for a hot day, right? <laughs> yeah. And it being summer, this is like the perfect time for, uh, something a little fruitier. And if you ever want to have a real time of it, go to the store and make, you know, your goal to find Chardonnays that are under $5 a bottle. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And some of them are actually good. <laughs> like I could find lots of Chardonnays under $5. I don't know about 
good. Yeah, don't they have them at the don't they have them at the local stop and shop or something? You know, like the the Exxon or you know, Seven Eleven. They have them there, don't they? Oh gosh, I don't think I've even seen uh, wines that cheap at the gas station. <laughs> Everyone marks them up it's like here are the thing that you can get for eight bucks at the supermarket. We're gonna sell it for fifteen. Oh yeah, well, I never look at the prices. I just I just know it's not good wine there. You know, like the. I don't know. <laughs> so. Uh, Trader Earlier. Joe's has got three or four dollar bottles of wine. So we know okay. you're drinking something, Kitty. You flashed it at us earlier. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. I am she doing Angry Orchard Peach Mango. Okay, yeah. Figured Ooh. I'd give it a try. And yeah, it's uh, pretty tasty. Good summer nice. one. A peach mango. Huh? That sounds yeah, good. I, I like peach mango. mango. I like mango flavor. Mitchell likes peach. So perfect. <laughs> there you go. Nice mix. <laughs> Well, so yeah, a buck chuck is now a three buck chuck. Apparently, as the price has gone up, <laughs> oh, that's true. I I don't think I would know where to find a two buck chuck. And, <laughs> you know, it might be you know some lighter fluid in there or something. I don't know. Two buck. Ooh, boy. <laughs> Okay, well, okay, that, so that ends the podcast. Within a podcast, uh, what are you drinking? Uh, <laughs> so before we get into our homework or whatever, Mick, what's this uh, Balt Balticon? What is that? Give us a little bit more explanation. <laughs> I'd assume that would be Baltimore Con. Yes, he's in Maryland. Oh. But it's like, what, like what's, what, what, kind, what, yeah, what kind of yeah. theme is it? So anyway. I know how to yeah. Google yeah, sure you sure you do. Yeah. That's, what's the fun in that? Come on, come on. <laughs> uh, Memorial Day weekend in May. Uh, okay. Fifty sixth year. So it's, wow, it's been, been going on for a while. Okay. I mean, I assume Balti Balticon fifty six would imply that okay. it's fifty sci fi sci fi yeah. fantasy convention. Think, okay. Yeah. Uh, poorly designed website. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed a lot of conventions are that way. <laughs> Uh, this doesn't have any art in it or anything. It, it shows just basic pictures of their uh, their guests, none of who I recognize. So I assume they're authors. Probably. Is it a <clears throat> literary con? <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm. It like I remember, I remember oh. back in the year years ago, I went to I think it was it's called Worldcon. And that was supposed to be a big, big to do. You know, everyone was like, "Oh, excited about it!" Hey, we are going to Worldcon. It's a big thing. That's what like the, the science fiction awards are giving out, like the Nebula Awards, the Hugo Awards, kind of thing like that. Oh, okay. You know, but that's that's a big deal. However, the con itself was the used bookstore, essentially giant, giant oh, no. used bookstore. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the the floor. You know, I'm sure there was there was panels everywhere and a lot of parties. But, you know, I'm not much of a panel guy, but the parties were fun. <laughs> but most of the parties were like people trying to encourage, we're gonna, you know, try to bring it to our city next year kind of <laughs> kind of parties. You know, it's like, it's like OK, yeah, that wasn't what I expected it to be, essentially. I don't know what I was expecting, right. but it wasn't that, <laughs> you know, So like the vendor floor was just covered in, in booksellers. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I'm not hating on that. That does sound interesting. Yeah, it was, but like I said, but it was not what I was expecting. Um, especially mm -hmm. since I've been to other conventions, like you know, Star Trek conventions, everything like that. I just ex expected more. Um, and like I said, but that, but seeing that that's where the science fiction awards are given out, you know, like I said, I thought I forget the Hugo or the Nebula is one of those two, maybe both. I don't know, you know. So that you know, that's the big deal where science fiction writers want to win, you know. So that's I guess you know, all the science fi books were there, kind of thing. <laughs> so you know, but other than that. You know, once you went, once you go through it a few times, and you know, it's like, well, I don't, I don't want any of these books. What else? Oh, let's go to the, I guess, go to the hotels and see where the parties are. You know, kind of thing. There was partying all day, <laughs> all day parties. You know, that doesn't sound bad. No, it wasn't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's when I first realized, hey, I do like shrimp cocktail. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it was good. That's it was good. I didn't get. Ways. Yeah, I didn't get. I didn't get sick or anything, but I realized, oh, oh that's pretty good stuff. <laughs> Very steampunk friendly. Okay. Meaning literary. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's lit literally. I can't pronounce. I can't talk. Someone else talk. <laughs> the one or two literary cons that I I had attended, they seem much more low key, and um, for me, I didn't think they were very exciting. Exactly, because <laughs> I'm not a writer, so the the panel discussions aren't really for me. 
And uh, I don't see a lot of costumes or uh, movie viewing rooms or <coughs> right. gaming. Mm-hmm. Just people talking about their book. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And my impression in, for the uh, more literary focused conventions is that a lot of the people who are doing those don't want to see cosplay at their events. So <laughs> that's probably true. Mm-hmm. And, and okay, you have fun with that. Um, that's not very interesting, colorful. Where's the pageantry? <laughs> well, apparently, this one's very steampunk friendly, so we could go steampunk if we wanted to. <laughs> okay. That's according to Mick there. Man, up. <laughs> now I'm just like thinking of like taking book pages and creating like paper mache steampunk accessories. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I have a few steampunk books that I determined that I hate. We can tear them up. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Some steampunk books you hate. Okay, okay. Is it anything like that steam bound? Urgh, hate it that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's all I'll say. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was that 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 steampunk convention in Las Vegas that we constantly talk about. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. They had some some authors there who wanted to get started, and you know, I bought their first book or whatever. Um, Not good. <sighs> <laughs> I reviewed I reviewed it like a few years ago, mm. but it was like really misogynist in, in a sort of 1960s Western sort of I think that's what he was going for. But now it's just like why would, you, why would you write that? <laughs> and I had no interest in reading any more of his books. And I'm stuck with that one until I paper mache something with it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or you got to level a table or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. That's funny. Yeah, it's like when I went to I, I, one con I did go to, that was a big con. Everyone loves Dragon Con. I went to Dragon Con like three years ago. It was huge. It was it was enormous. But since I, I went to some of the, they had um, a podcast um track and i went to some of their 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 panels and everything and i think i I learned a few things but a lot of it was like huh i already know that huh (laughs) okay i i know more than i thought i did kind of thing you know it's like (laughs) you know that or no one else really knows what they're doing either so (laughs) we're just making it up as we go that's always funny when you get into that situation it's just like wait i i'm i actually know things I'm not yeah, just exactly. making this it up. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just making it up together. You know, it's like <laughs> next thing you know, somebody on the internet is referring to you as the elder nerd. <laughs> Kid. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my day. But, uh, I was a nerd before any of this was cool. <laughs> so for those listening, Mick Ryder wants to assure us that Balticon is 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 popping. Or Ooh, there's a masquerade and hopping or whatever that they they like cosplay and they have a masquerade and there's actually they're still cool even though they might be literary as well so <laughs> we're not we're not talking we're, we're not throwing shade on balticon <laughs> but yeah. you, you, you have to dress up as your favorite literary character from from <laughs> from a novel you know, that can be cool yeah. uh i it's up for, I, it's open for interpretation because if it's just a book, there's no pictures. You don't know what they look like. Yep. <laughs> I follow a cosplayer who has uh, made a cosplay costume of an Aes Sedai, uh, a, a wizard from uh, uh, Wheel of Time. Mm. And she looks awesome in it. I, nice. I would have to ask her what she was dressed as. But <laughs> now, once I knew, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. That is one I, series of books I have not yet delved into. <laughs> I, they're long. I know. Oh my they're God, intimidating. They're <laughs> like I read a whole book. At the end, I was like, okay, did the plot move in this book? Did anything <laughs> happen? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad if you read such a big book and don't know if anything happened. <laughs> Jeez. 
Oh, you um, forgot what happened in the beginning? <laughs> How did this start? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of that. <laughs> kind of like, like, uh, like Harry Potter's last book, Harry Potter and the Camping Trip that would never end. <laughs> it felt like that. That was the movie, yeah, for sure. <laughs> or the movies. <laughs> that was two movies. Yeah. <laughs> but she's also cosplayed uh, uh, Ben Franklin as a uh, uh, space marine. Space Marine nice. Ben Franklin. Interesting. That was awesome. <laughs> I want to see this. <laughs> I, I am currently reading a novel that uh, Ben Franklin is a wizard. <laughs> He's called yes. the Wizard Ben Franklin. <laughs> but that's Makes not what I'm doing. That's not what I'm talking about tonight. So, <laughs> speaking of, let's go ahead and segue into our homework. I'll start with mine. Oh. Oddly enough, this is surprising. Well, I think last week we mentioned. Last time we mentioned um, the TV show Frankenstein Chronicles. Right, yeah. you wanted to watch that. Yes, I watched two episodes. <laughs> I don't know if it's steampunk. It's definitely of the time. Um, he, he's a good actor. I forgot his name again. You know, the guy that oh, always Sean dies. Bean? Sean, Bean, Sean Bean, yeah. Bean. He's a good actor. He's good in it. <laughs> but it's just a, it's bleak and depressing, those first two episodes. And I just couldn't take bleak and depressing. <laughs> I'm just not in the mode for that. Um, cause you know, there's, there's a crime crimes and they're not good crimes. Obviously they're bleak. They're very bleak crimes and they're F Frankenstein related, I guess. And, you know, sewing body parts together, <laughs> you know, but, and, and he's, he's on, um, well, he, apparently he has syphilis and he's on, he's on mercury for treatment. And so thus he hallucinates every once in a while or doesn't know what's real sometimes. And, so, and it made it hard for me to realize what's real or not. It's like, what, what's, what's, is this supernatural or is he hallucinating? What the fuck's going on? I don't know. <laughs> you know, and that's yeah, just I, the two, first two episodes. So, and there's two seasons of it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even get through the first episode. So you agree <laughs> that it's bleak and depressing. <laughs> well, I don't do gore. So yeah, there was gory, a little yeah. more than I wanted. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm, no, I'm checking out of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would label it steampunk because I didn't watch enough of it to see if there's any steampunk things happening other than somebody, Mary Shelley's in it, the writer of Frankenstein, <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> but you know, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm afraid to watch anymore because I'm not in the mood to be depressed. <laughs> You know, it's like, but that wasn't my homework. I'll just throw that in there. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> really? Okay. Um, I was remember I make I was making a list. I make a list. I made a list for Patreon of all the steampunk comic books and really, and you know, steampunk related comic books. And I realized <laughs> I had read, I read a series of comics or or graphic novels, comics. Yeah. A few years ago, before I realized I was into steampunk. <laughs> And this is more, well, it's, it's steampunk, but it's more Weird West with a little bit of horror thrown in. It's called The Sixth Gun. <laughs> and it's basically, there are there are six magical guns that are, well, I'll read the back. Actually, I'll just, I'll share this. I'll share the screen real quick here. Uh, and I'll read it for you people watch, listening later. <laughs> um, okay, share. All right, here we go. The Sixth Gun. Da, 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 da. Where is it? Where'd it go? It went away. Oh, there it is. During the darkest days of the Civil War, wicked cutthroats came into possession of six pistols of otherworldly power. In time, the six gun, the most dangerous of the weapons, vanished. When the guns surfaced in the hands of an innocent girl, dark forces reawakened. Vile men thought long dead set their sights on retrieving the gun and killing the girl. Only Drake Sinclair, the gunfighter with a shady past, stands in their way. And yeah, these there's these there's these six magical guns. There's well, okay, there's there's nine volumes in the series and a couple of three volumes of separate side stories: Sons of the Guns, Dust of the Death, and, and Days of the Dead. And I'm going to stop sharing now. <laughs> but these guns have magical powers, and whoever whoever carries it's bonded to them. If if it's if you have the gun, it's bonded to you. Nobody can just take it away from you. <laughs> And you're really hard to kill when you have one. <laughs> so, you know, you become pretty powerful. Like one of them shoots like hellfire. Um, another one shoots with uh, the power of a cannon, basically. <laughs> you know, it doesn't doesn't have the backfire of one or the, the recoil of one. But when it hits, it's like you, got, you hit it with a cannon. <laughs> um, another one 
heals all your wounds and basically makes you unkillable. <laughs> And and makes you youthful, basically like almost like a fountain of youth kind of situation. That's three. The one another one. Whoever you kill with it later on, you can make us uh, like a golem of him <laughs> to bit to do your biddings. Oh. <laughs> so basically, if you kill a lot of people, you suddenly have an army of golems <laughs> on your <Nice>. side. <laughs> and another one. I'm not sure. I think the other one gave you some kind of armor. I'm not really. I think that's what that one did. <laughs> And I'm not sure what the six gun does yet because I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> it's, it's the most powerful of guns. Yes, apparently it's you can you're, you're the commander. Yeah, force of a huh. cannon shell, flames of perdition. Oh, one of them. If you shoot somebody with it, even if you just nick them, you're gonna rot away from disease essentially. <laughs> <laughs> you, so you don't even have to have a, be a dead shot with them. You just have to touch hit, hit them with it anywhere, and you you die you die of disease almost instantaneously. <laughs> so that's one, two, three, four, five. That's all. That's five of them. They don't say what the sixth one does exactly yet, but wow. it's it's really it's really well written. It's uh from Om Omni Press. Um, Colin Bunn is the writer. Brian Hurt is the artist. I don't know if it's is that Colin Bunn sounds familiar. Is he an actor? Sounds like an actor. <laughs> uh, don't know if it's the same guy, but, <laughs> but anyway. I, re I recommend it if you like if you, it's not horror horror but you know it's it's supernatural for sure and a bunch of evil men going around killing people <laughs> but it really sounds like a good setup to make a video game out of that yeah I, I heard rumors that they're gonna make a TV show or a movie but I haven't seen it hide it no hide nor hair of it I am DB has the sixth gun listed as a TV movie that mm -hmm. came out in 2013 huh I've never heard Sadly, of it a failed pilot adaptation oh, okay. of, oh. a, of an eponymous, eponymous comic book set in the Wild West about exactly what you said. Um, but it does star Pedro Pascal, who yeah, has right. gone on to do better things. Yeah, like uh, The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's too bad it was a failed... A failed uh, I wonder if we can find that pilot somewhere. I'm going to have to look for it. Probably on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> yes. But it's got a lot of names that now I, I recognize. Uh, Aldous Hodge, uh, which who was the uh, one of the actors in um, what is the name of that? Uh, make sure I, I, I don't know that. the name. Actually, that name does not ring a bell to me. No, but never mind. That's a different color. <laughs> Wrong guy. Move on. <laughs> uh, okay, Graham McTavish. Uh, he's done. He's done. Uh, he's Scottish. And uh, yeah. he's done some television and film and uh, voice acting. He's in a lot of things. Let me see. Uh... Is he an Outlander? Come on, computer. <laughs> Don't know. Rambo. That's not right. A McTavish, an Outlander? No. <laughs> <laughs> that couldn't be possible. Maybe a character was named McTavish. Maybe that's what you're getting. No, I... I... <laughs> Really thought that someone uh, who was one of the actors in it had the last name of mm. McTavish, and I noticed it because that's the tartan that I wear. Ah, nice. <laughs> okay, is that, your, is that your plan? Rita, Rita, says, Rita says, that says yes. <laughs> okay, so that's my homework. There's, there's, there's plenty. Of, it's, an old, it's, it's an older series. Sorry, go ahead. He's an Aquaman. It's, Aquaman. it's not being published anymore, but you can still get the you, you can still get the trades. You know, online somewhere. There's like nine trades and three side trades, side stories. So it's a lot to read and it's really good. And yeah, I had read this once a while back and I decided to reread it because I was like, hey, wait a minute. I think that might be. And I just to double check. Sure, sure enough, this fits right into the right category. Weird West slash horror. <laughs> That's cool. Nice. nice. Actually, the, in the back, it's it's labeled as Western slash fantasy, so that's what it would be filed under if it was any in a library somewhere. <laughs> and like I said, it's it's really well written. It's not it's not silly. It's not. I don't think it's too go too much gore. Yeah, there's not a lot of gore, <laughs> you know, but people do get shot. Um, the description like kind of reminded me of uh, uh, Stephen King's uh, the Gunslinger. Yeah, first book in the Dark Tower series because mm -hmm. it's the only one I've read. Yeah, that's the only one I've read too. <laughs> <laughs> that guy must have had a magic gun because it never ran out of bullets. Right. The, yeah, these don't run out of bullets either. It says that in here too. You don't have to reload them. 
So that certainly makes things easy. <laughs> yep. But um, yeah. So that that was my homework, and uh, like I said, I highly recommend it. It is on my is on the list of over a hundred comics <laughs> on the Patreon. And counting. <laughs> and counting. Yeah, and counting. Because <laughs> I just put it on the list today because I didn't realize I had forgotten about it when I was making the list. <laughs> no. So there you go. Um, how about you? This do you, Thax? What do you, what do you want to talk about? Um, a couple of things. First, hey, Vi Sci Fi is, uh, hello. is uh, saying hello. So, hey, dude. Um, another per- yeah, another period. It is funny. I don't know that one. Uh, he's recommending, my, recommending another period as a steampunk comedy palate cleanser for your uh, Frankenstein Chronicles. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, your mouth. Another period. Um, what's her name? Um, well, um, crap, my mind, just went, my mind just went blank. She's on, on the, the, the comedy yeah, singing yeah. duel, Hall of Notes. Um, oh, yeah. The, the blonde, she's in it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've only, I don't think I've seen some of it, but I wasn't really paying attention. But yeah, from what I can tell, it was really funny. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard of it before, so I'm going to check that out. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's just an aside. Uh, also, I heard this week that uh, the. The steampunk cruise this year has been canceled mm. uh, because the cruise line canceled their the route that they were planning. So that's a that's a bummer. Uh, I wasn't planning on going, um, but play for ship, play are, ship. You know, <laughs> for those who were, I guess they're not anymore, and that sucks. So they're making their plans for next year. Um, so yeah. If, that's if good. I mean, yeah, make plans for next year. Before, maybe uh, that's uh, something you can consider. And hopefully, we won't still be in plague times next year. This is this is going on a long time. Yeah, yeah. People, anyway. Let's no let's end the plague together. Let's all get uh, our vaccine. And wear your uh, mask. Comes in three flavors. <laughs> um. So yeah, great. Okay, so what I found this week. So as you know, I was in Salt Lake City for uh, for work for, for work last two weeks with nothing better to do than to wander around the city that, when I wasn't working. I'm glad you had time because when I was in Salt Lake City, I didn't have time to wander around the city. <laughs> There's not much to see. Quite I know. Honestly. True. <laughs> um, when I, I was there in December, so it was snowing. <laughs> And I was working overnights, so you know. <laughs> anyway. So you were exhausted all day, I'm sure. Yep. So let me let's see if I can click here, clack there, do do clack of this and clack of that. <laughs> that. So. And to my to my side is where is he? Oh, I can't see him. <laughs> Where'd he go? Can he, oh, there there's he his, came. there he is. He's looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> and I got my other one out there on the chair. <laughs> yeah, nice. They are around. They're always around me. Yeah, I was okay, looking off sure. to the side because one of my girls was uh, sticking a paw under a door that she's not supposed <laughs> to go into. Like, oh. Mm. Well, of course, got to know what's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> well, she knows what's on the other side. There's a sword on the other side, <laughs> and she's knocked it over before. Her. Well, she oh, wants to do it again. That's why, that's why she's not allowed. <laughs> uh, well, it's my former workroom before I got my workshop, um, and now there's just a bunch of mannequins and a bunch of fabrics and random other accessories in there, including swords <laughs> and parasols and whatnot. All fun things. All fun things. <laughs> Okay, did you find it? Did you find the facts? I didn't. I'm not going to worry about it. So okay. while I was up there, I found this place called uh, the Trolley Square, um, which has got a big water tower outside that's decorated kind of steampunk, kind of uh, old westy. Um, and it's basically some remodeled, I, I think it's an airport or an aircraft hangar. Oh, a couple okay. like Quonset huts, but like big and made of brick. Old timey, <laughs> old timey. <laughs> and so they, they rebuilt it into sort of, of a little mall inside, and I was pretty bored, so I went in. 
<laughs> did you have a, did you have a rental car or were you taking Ubers or what? Uh, yeah, I had a rental car, so I was <laughs> um, making use of it as as well as I could. But inside, I found this store that that was uh, did that work? Yeah, called the Machine Age. Ooh, which isn't so much a store as it is a, a art exhibit for an artist that happens to work in the mall. <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, it, it's really cool. It's filled with all of his his steampunk art stuff. Looks um, like a lot of lamps. A lot of lamps. It is easy to make a lamp <laughs> with steampunk stuff. <laughs> Take any item and plug a light bulb into it. You're good to go. Yeah. Um, but I like his style. I like the, the choices he made with the lamps um and i thought that was that was neat and i was you know desperate for for something of interest so the machine <laughs> age really caught my my eye i took some pictures myself but i found that the ones on his website are better pictures than i took through the nice. window because <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't in what uh, i've learned so it, you it, couldn't go wander uh, around in there yeah i couldn't wander around inside i could just stick my in nose on the window um because he was upstairs across the street in a place called uh the the spectacle oh which is an eyeglass shop oh okay, okay. which is where his regular job is <laughs> nice <laughs> so wow uh, you must make good money to be able to rent the space in the mall like that <laughs> well i i think maybe the rents aren't too high there wasn't a lot of traffic in the mall mm. and uh, I don't know all conjecture on my part but I thought it was really cool uh, this, yeah. this artist kind Professor of... Julian Raintree and his curious concoctions one of the kind <laughs> funky fab steampunk lighting clockworks computer keyboards and antiques vintage creations uh, I thought that was that's you know, nice. Yeah, that's cool. It's kind of like kind of like uh, the lamp shop in in San Marcos that we used to go hang out at every so yeah, often. Yeah. Carousel Except horse. Ooh. I think there's there's just more stuff in this place. Uh, so that that that's kind of my my thing. Uh, yeah, you like you made a few lamps on your in your time. Oh yeah, I, I've made a, a couple. I will probably make more as the spirit inspires me. But I really <laughs> liked his. His style, the way he's he's got these sort of put together. <clears throat> I wish I could have met him, uh, <laughs> but I, I did not find him in his store, and I didn't understand that he was actually working in the spectacle shop at the time. I thought he was just like getting his glasses fixed or something. Because <laughs> I had a sign in front of the in front of the window that says he's over there, <laughs> temporarily closed. I am upstairs in the spectacle shop, like. <laughs> Yeah, that, that sounds like I've bopped out, and I will be back shortly. <laughs> yeah, right, he needs yeah. to go upstairs and put a new screw in his his, his glasses or something. <laughs> no, no, that, that's not quite it. Okay, for everybody who's listening later on and not watching this directly, put the website on the comments here or something and put a link. And we're watching, looking at the, the machine. What was it? Uh, the Machine, machine Age, Age is okay, the name yeah. of his shop inside the Trolley Square. In Salt Lake City, so uh, let's see. Yes, we, we we have to we have to link to it for people who listen later to be able to look at the pretty pictures of all the cool stuff. <laughs> and there are many treadle sewing machines in those photos too. <laughs> I've seen a lot of these sewing machines that people have turned into like little race cars. Yeah, <laughs> I've Not seen that. Yeah, guy. I've seen that a lot race recently, and all I can think of is. You ruined a perfectly good sewing machine. Yeah. I yeah. don't like it. No. Well, at the same time, when it comes to some of these sewing machines, there were so many of them made that the antique market is flooded with these things. And so okay. you can actually get them for a decent cost as just something to fool around with and make something different and fun. So, <laughs> like a race car. <laughs> like a race car. They don't <laughs> or an espresso anymore. machine. <laughs> Well, they have. If to, I mean, it doesn't work I, anymore. I, I met, I'm fine. That that that's right. fine. 
Yeah. Well, if it doesn't work anymore, I can't imagine it working as a race car because wouldn't it be using the little well, engine or whatever, the little motor it has in there? <laughs> no, no, no. No, yeah. they're just, you know, toy model. Oh, well, still, it has to move. It's like the, yeah. like the teapot, like the teapot racing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think these are just, you know, I made a fun toy. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I found this guy at thetrolleysquare.com uh, forward slash the dash machine dash age. Uh, I also found him on Facebook. If you're clever, you can find them at the, uh, what is he? Let me see what he's called on Facebook. Do, do, do. Where's my, where's my <laughs> yeah, links? The machine age guy. I don't know. <laughs> that guy. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash the steampunk spectacle. <laughs> Will take you to the machine age. <laughs> okay. And these days, you've got to be like really clever with your naming on Facebook because all the good names. Yeah, are definitely. <laughs> um, you know, like the Texas Steampunk Connection. That's on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and we're good. That is the Texas us. Steampunk Connection. <laughs> <coughs> In fact, you're probably watching us on Facebook as we speak. Some, at least four of you guys well, are, are, according to this. As, as you speak, <laughs> perhaps not as we speak. Time is confusing. Right. It gets yeah, that's right. It gets recorded. You can actually watch us again later on another day. <laughs> so that's or, what I found as far as, as steampunk goes. Um being rather busy in my hotel room uh or or at work. I didn't really get out to see much or or do a lot of research. I just happened across this thing and I thought it was pretty cool. Hey, yeah, I did try to uh, find a, a steampunk group in Utah, and they have a Facebook group, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, their schedules did not work out so that I could actually meet anybody in person. Oh, dumb bummer. They were trying to get together for like a dinner gathering, mm -hmm. but but I, people weren't available. So yeah, boy, if had they got together and you showing up, they would have been shocked. Like somebody from Texas is here. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> how'd you find us here? Yeah, it's always because I know that there's a steampunk group out in West Texas in the, the, the Permian Basin, Midland and Odessa area. But every time I'm there, I don't have time to meet up with any of them you know, or they're not having anything, any kind of meet up at all. You know, and so it's just really hard, difficult to get in touch with them. Why do I have something in a private chat? Did you send me the link there? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where else you send it. Oh, OK. I'm not able to share. Uh, oh, you can't you can't put it in the actual comments. Uh, I was just gonna I was just gonna put it here. Oh, I thought you were gonna put it on the screen. Yeah, that works. Oh, I can put it there too, but first it has to be here. So then now I can show it. See, uh -oh. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Only you you could do that. Yes, I have the magic buttons. <laughs> you do. All right. Yeah. So yeah, the trolley square forward slash the machine age. Pretty cool. So um. Yeah, if you want to go over there and comment on that guy's uh, Facebook page or something, let him know we were talking about him. Yeah, That'd be, be sure to mention Texas Steampunk Connection. <laughs> hey, heard you heard about you on a Texas Steampunk Connection. <laughs> or just check out his stuff. It's really pretty cool. He had a he had a time machine, like Jules Verne time machine in his store. Ooh. Was it full that size? Uh, full size. I mean, you could sit in it. Ooh, I mean, wow! I couldn't, there was <laughs> that would have been fun if we, that would have been fun to get go get get pictures taken of in there. You know, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Man, now we have now we have to go to Salt Lake City just for that. <laughs> 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 everyone, this Texas steampunks just makes a trip over there, and everyone just floods this mall. Right, just just, normally, just a sitting like, that empty. sitting that time machine. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Is there free beer? What is happening? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's one hey, thing I'll... I miss in Salt Lake City. They have some breweries there, but I didn't get to any of them. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah, when we when we meet at the, the lamp company in New San Marcos, they he would have beer and snacks because <laughs> they were meetups, you know. <laughs> he was very generous. Yes, uh, he was. Yeah. And, but he, he stopped it. having meetups even before COVID. So he, I think he was having problems, maybe health issues, maybe. Um, he uh, Or anxiety the, issues, something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he, uh, he's, uh, he has a lot of social anxiety. 
and so these these meetups were sort of a uh, a challenge for him, and, and so he that's why he was having them to to some right. degree, I think, to to challenge his his uh, social anxiety and to kind of get himself put forward. But yep. uh, yeah, he decided to uh, go another direction. Last I heard, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. He did well when he when he tried. I mean, he, he lasted a while. We went, we went along a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, I can very much understand that. Like that takes a lot of spoons out of you when you've got uh, social anxiety. And it's like mm, I'm actually put myself out there. Yeah. 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 Yep. I I, I've been. I, I people I don't know. Yeah, I, I have my I have my bouts of social anxiety where I don't want to you know do any go go see people. What? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, why would I do that? <laughs> yeah, there were like times back in the old days when we were having the uh, meetings at Sherlock's. Sherlock's, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. If mm -hmm. I just like disappeared, it's because my social anxiety went off the charts, <laughs> like, and I'm just like, like, ah, goodbye. And I didn't enough. say goodbye to anyone, <laughs> so I just like wasn't there anymore. And I'm always like, I wonder if anyone noticed. Oh well. <laughs> I've been known to disappear from places too on occasion. <laughs> Sometimes that's the only way you can get out of there. Yeah. 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 You start saying goodbye. Oh, the next person wants you to say goodbye to them. The next person, <laughs> three hours go by. I'm like, right. Why am I still here? Do you right. know and what not, works really well, though, for that situation? Start licking people. <laughs> <laughs> then no one will approach you. And then you um, can escape. <laughs> you might be able to get away with that. <laughs> yeah. I think I would get arrested. So, <laughs> no. I, I definitely got away with it a few times. <laughs> I think Lisa has photo evidence of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Clearwater Steampunk Festival, August 12th and 19th. And 19th. Free, Free online, online on Zoom. <laughs> Ooh. I'll look that up. You know, I'm always trying to add stuff to uh, a steampunk calendar. Yes. Which you can have access to through our Patreon page. <laughs> yep. For, the, <laughs> for, a, for, a, for a low, low $3 a month um, tier. <laughs> yeah, Rita. In, in our, in our great your thanks. heart ends in your throat. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, me getting arrested would it prevents me from licking people, and I don't, I don't feel like getting arrested. <laughs> don't you know there's a pandemic on? <laughs> right. <laughs> You're gonna catch something. <laughs> or cooties. Get, uh, cooties? Oh no! That's what the booze is for? <laughs> Alcohol just takes care of all the germs. There yeah. you go. <laughs> exactly. So if you, if you, so if you see her taking a big swig of alcohol, be prepared. She might want to lick you to get to make you go away. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol comes after the lick. <laughs> oh right, it's a chaser. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't know where their cheek has been. <laughs> Rita says my social anxiety would prevent me from licking people. Rita, maybe that's a good reason to have social anxiety. Yes, I think I, it would prevent me from licking people too. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. Okay, so did you you said you might have had something for us today, Kitty? I, I might. Yeah, I found out um through a wonderful little Facebook ad um that was actually appropriately targeted for once. Um that there <laughs> is <laughs> I know, right? Um there is going to be a working steam engine on display in Fort Worth this weekend on Saturday. Ooh. And nice. It is available to come and I believe actually tour. I was kind of checking through some of the website earlier and apparently in some cities it's only um, available for viewing and they'll essentially have a fence around it so you can't go up to it. But that's not the case for the Fort Worth uh, event. Oh, wow. You can actually potentially go up to it and check things out and I don't and, I think they'll actually it. have some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, lick the steam engine, you will lose your tongue. <laughs> Depends on where you lick it. <laughs> True. <laughs> I think we broke sacks. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to be one of those kind of shows. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lick the steam engine. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, so it will be on uh, display from, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Which page are you? Come on now. Do, 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 do. Cause apparently it is actually doing kind of a countrywide tour. And Saturday, August 14th, Fort Worth, Texas, one block east of 825 East 9th Street on display 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on display means that in addition to day-long display hours, <laughs> display days include access to the Experience, the Union Pacific Rail Car. The Experience. Special edition. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, souvenirs are also available for sale at the merch tent. Uh, it is free admission. There's no tickets. Um, but they will not um, necessarily account for where you have to park and if you have to pay to park. So. Mm. You might See, have to park. Don't we? I mean, we're supposed to have a steam engine here, but it's never working. And remember, we took no, that train one... ride to out of uh, yeah, where the, we, the out, out of Cedar Park. Train. Yeah, the Austin steam train. It's not a steam train because they don't they don't use the steam train. <laughs> they have one, but it's broken. Yeah. Oh, well, this one uh, is apparently working. Yeah, they need to bring it down here. <laughs> not only is it going to be available just to view on Saturday, on Sunday, it will be departing Fort Worth at 8 a.m. And nice. it will be making stops on its way down to Houston. And then after Houston, it will be making its way into Louisiana. So you can actually ride this train. Nice. Wow. So you can take it to Louisiana if you want. <laughs> what do you search for on Facebook to find this thing? Um, How about I just copy a link to you so number one oh gosh that's the wrong page <laughs> all right that is the nope. news article. all right i got it here that's not it nope that wasn't it sent me back to the steam let's try that again it's down here there it is <laughs> all right copying it Yes, it's a very exciting radio. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I am now pasting it onto our chat. So this is this is organized by the Union Pacific. And I cannot Railroad? show it. Yeah. So for those of you listening or watching later, it is now being displayed on our screen. It is, uh, and there's a link to it in our comments. So <laughs> there you go. And you know, that's this weekend, so I don't know if I, I, man, I have to get these up fast then if it's going to be this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for next week to put this on. All right. Usually, because so what I try to do is, what I try to do is I try to post the audio version of it on the week we're not being live. Like I will post this ah. next Tuesday, but since we have something that's happening this weekend, I'll try to post it tomorrow. <laughs> nice. Let's see. Wow. And those I of you who can't make it this weekend, it is free comic book day this weekend at your local comic shops. Um, they give they give a lot of good stuff out, but normally this year, as most years, there is going to be a Lady Mechanica comic, which is a great steampunk comic. Um, so if you know if you don't know what she is, um, it's the art is the art is spectacular in this series of comics, Lady Me Lady Mechanica. Very detailed. Hmm. Very detailed. Yeah, very detailed, very beautiful, very beautiful art. The stories are fun. She's kind of a mix of uh, Holmes and Indiana Jones, kind of, you know, si she's a cyborg, you know, steampunk cyborg. She's kind of a mix of, you know, Sherlock Holmes and Indiana Jones kind of person. Um, so it's, it's, they're really fun tales, really, really fun stories. And, you know, I, I highly recommend it. So if you can get to a local comic shop sometime this weekend or Saturday, actually, Saturday only, um, look for the Lady Mechanica comic. <laughs> it's a free one, you know. So there you go. You get a free. You get a free taste. <laughs> and I just if I'm not that out there. <laughs> free comic book day tells me that it's your birthday. Not this year. <laughs> My birthday's what? in May. Free comic book day is usually the first weekend in May, but because of COVID and everything last year, it threw everything off. <laughs> and they just they've been yeah. <laughs> it's it's so no longer in May. Birthday this year. I don't want to get old that Happy much faster. <laughs> You're making me get older faster. No. <laughs> Maybe 52 and a half now? I don't know. <laughs> My 52 and a half birthday. <laughs> That's fair. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll do that. 
course, that hasn't been six months after my birthday. Eh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> just, <laughs> but anyway, just round it. It's fine. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know because of the new, well, because of COVID, a lot of the comic book stores around here are actually canceling their in-store gathering or line or whatever. And they're basically going to say, just go uh, give us a list of what you want. And well, you can pick it up <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So, you know, call your local stores. If they're doing <laughs> and if they have it. <laughs> so that sort of undermines the whole free comic book day. To well, it's still free. Traffic in. I mean, yeah. right. But the store's benefit was to bring traffic, get traffic into the store. I understand, but COVID, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all, it's messing everything up. So, especially say you're in Austin, we're back to state. Well, Texas, we're stage five now, Texas, which is yeah. bad. That's bad. Stage five is not a good stage to be in. <laughs> yeah, the last graph I saw, um, infection rates were like there was a straight up line on the oh, graph. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so, I saw one uh, of the projected graphs where it was just like, do, 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 do. yeah, like, crazy. Oh boy. So get your shots. Get your shots. <laughs> Wear a mask anyway. Wash your hands. Yep. If you know, even if you don't think you're, if you're not scared of it, you know, you don't want to get someone else you love sick, right? Just you might be sick and don't know it. You might have it, not know it, pass it on, whatever. Just, just be better safe than sorry. <laughs> That's all That's I have to say. say. Don't lick people right now. Don't lick people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kitty. Don't. But luckily, <laughs> but luckily with social anxiety, there aren't going to be a lot of huge <laughs> gatherings. <laughs> <laughs> so, what if, so you don't have to worry about your social anxiety. What if you ask to see your vaccine passport before you lick people? <laughs> well, everything's oh, consent. Yeah. Everything's all everything all around consent. Okay, <laughs> in that respect, I guess when it comes to passing the plagues around, let's get some consent. <laughs> <laughs> Consensually passed plagues. Oh dear. <laughs> or, or you know, make sure you don't have it so you won't pass it, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't everybody know what I'm I saying met, anymore. <laughs> everybody I met in Salt Lake City, I'm pretty sure, was not vaccinated. I'm shocked. That was, uh, yeah, they 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 do not believe in in the vaccines. The few people that I talked to, there were very few. Obviously, is it because, is it because of the religion or just their politics or both? Politics. 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 Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Because of, I don't know Fox News or. Whatever. So what you're what you're saying is there should be some decently uh, nice properties available in a few months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, Except prices yeah, we, and, we, like housing we, prices here in Austin are shooting ago. up though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They are here too. Uh, big corporations, big uh, you know, Tesla is building here and uh, yeah. other. Companies are coming and not bringing the employees, jobs, and everybody wants a new house. Like half the houses in my neighborhood have new people in them. Oh, geez. Wow. And those are those those prices in that neighborhood are cra crazy insane, you know. And they're yeah. they're not like the newest houses either, you know. They're... No, they're they're <laughs> they're just normal houses. I mean, mm -hmm. this is you know sort of the normal neighborhood I remember growing up in as a child, but now they're more than half a million dollars. That's oh. insane. See, my, my house isn't that high. My house has doubled in price since I bought it, but it's it's not that high. And but it's it's just yeah. I, I was like, hey, I can sell it and make a profit. But then like, but then where would I live? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I was like, I don't know. I would be able to... look through the housing market. I can buy a shack. What? Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I, I just keep the house I'm in. Yeah. Just keep the house I'm at right now. There's you know, somebody although, in my neighborhood, like not within walking distance, but a mile or two down the road, that has built an entire second house in the backyard of their current house. Wow. Like the same size <laughs> as the first house. That's a big backyard, but that's a lot of work too. <laughs> yeah, There's not is. much backyard left, but uh, I, I guess they're going to rent it out or something. I it, would hope. It's going to pay for itself. <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs> Yeah. Oh wow! We're, we're wow. Well, we are just rambling on now. We have drifted completely off topic. Nothing, nothing to do with steampunk. Unless we're talking DIY, that's kind of steampunk. Yep. <laughs> he DIY'd his own house. Oh wait. 
It's like I got a letter or a postcard almost every day from someone who wants to buy my house. Oh yeah, someone's always trying. I'm always getting phone calls trying someone wanting to buy my house. So I'm not. I haven't gotten any letters. Well, if I have any letters, or I don't read them, so I, I guess I'm getting those too. We get letters. Yeah. <laughs> and ours doubled, almost doubled in price in just about a five-year span. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, mine's doubled in price, but it's been, I've been here a lot longer than that. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, run steampunk conventions in New Mexico. What? What are you talking about, Paisai? Yeah, you do have a steampunk convention there. He does? I think, yeah. Well, no, it's the... Oh. The, it's in Arizona. Wow, Wow Westcon? Yeah. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. But it's in a new place, and, and it's new people, or something. Questionable. Yeah. So apparently, it's not going to be the same. <laughs> well, yeah. Nothing can ever be the same again. <laughs> Damn COVID! We can't have new things. We can't have good things. Nice things. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, well, I mean, this is complete a little bit off topic as well. There, there's a there's a house that my grandfather owned in San Antonio. Well, I don't know if yeah, I guess he owned it. And it's it is an it is an old house, as old as it can be in San Antonio anyway. And since he passed a while back, I don't know my my aunt and well, yeah my aunt and her, my cousin lived there for a while after he passed. You know they still live there, and but the house was falling apart faster than they can keep it put it back together. You know keep it up. So they they just abandoned. They left. They moved out. <laughs> and, and ever since the, but who actually owns it and who can sell it or who, who has any kind of rights to it is so garbled because the will wasn't the, the, he didn't have a will oh goodness <laughs> so it's just sitting there abandoned and i and i keep getting phone because i have the same name i'm the fourth Fabio Faz the fourth he was he was junior so i get phone calls almost every other week from somebody trying to buy that house <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> and i'm telling it, it's like i don't know why they want it i guess they want the lots maybe but because the house is not worth anything <laughs> but it's ridiculous. I get phone calls all the damn time. I wish I can sell it because it has my name on it, but I'm not junior, you know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's that's lawyer and work right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. But hey, yeah, you know what? It. You say the house isn't worth anything, um, but I've watched a few YouTube videos in my time. <laughs> <laughs> From what I heard, it's bad. Say. It's bad. Like yeah, it's it's rotting. It's yeah. There's been squatters in there. It's bad. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah. No matter how bad the house is, it's easier to rebuild it than to tear it down to, to nothing and start over because yeah. you're going to need new permits. You're going to have to, re mm. you know, your house is going to have to meet code for yeah. you know, 2021 or whenever you build it rather than the year that it was built the first time. As it is, you only <laughs> have to meet code for the original house's date. Oh, wow. wow. Yes. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> well, and it's not just that. It's also like you have to pay for the disposal if you try to rip it down. Not That's mention true. like paying for yeah. the equipment and the workers to mm -hmm. be able to do that. And right. It's still, but up. yeah, it's, uh, I don't even want to, yeah. I wish I can just sell it. <laughs> but there was like, I mean, I even told a few, I've told them, like, I explained them, I was like, look, it's not mine. It was my grandfather's. It's my name on it. It's, you know, we have the same name. Yes, I know, but it's not mine. And said, they, they say, okay, well, well, we'll put a note on here so they won't call you anymore. They still call me. No one reads the notes. <laughs> <There you know? laughs> <laughs> they tell you that and then there is no note right <laughs> liars wow we're over an hour now okay sorry about yeah. that guys we drifted uh sorry, we did sorry. talk a little steampunk it was a little slow today but you know we had <laughs> kitty it was fun <laughs> <laughs> um so once again thank you for listening you can find us again on uh, facebook at texas steampunk connection for any comments questions suggestions if you know of a, if you know of something happening steampunk for you know that you want on the you would like to see on the calendar excuse me that's happening soon we can put it on our calendar which you can get access to on our patreon <laughs> which there's a link there's a link somewhere on our facebook i'll put i'll make sure the link is available on the Facebook for our Patreon, um, as well as the the list of over 100 comics and graphic novels, uh, steampunk and Weird West related, and all that. Uh, any complaints and you know critiques or whatever, uh, find us on Twitter somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there is a Twitter account. I just don't remember what it's. I never use it. I never look at it. I don't know. I don't understand Twitter. <laughs> but you know, I'm sure feel free I to find it. us. <laughs> <laughs> Probably there's nothing. I don't put anything on there. <laughs> Heck, I even have a personal Twitter. I don't know anything. I don't know. I don't even use. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I just, I just don't. 
I read it, I look at it, and I'm like, I'm, I don't know what they're talking about. There's no linear conversation to follow that I can find out, that I can figure out. <laughs> anyway. It's so three weeks ago. It's TikTok now. We've got to be on the TikToks. <laughs> I don't, that's what we're supposed to be working on, but Jack is dragging his heels. <laughs> the ticks and the talks. And the talks and the ticks and the flips and the flaps and the... Anyway. <laughs> We'll start a new service called Flip Flap. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> Whatever that means. But anyway, um, yeah. So, yeah, find it once again. Thank you very much. And until next time, mind your mind gauges. Mind your gauges.